Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What a glad this to be in this place. Amen. I bring greetings from uh, India to you all this morning. And I want to thank uh, Pastor Elliot for giving me this opportunity. And I want to thank, uh, you know, co uh, conference body. I want to thank uh, Pastor Tom Payne here. And what a great opportunity this morning. I have got it in my lifetime uh, to say thank you. Be off of my family and be off of my church in Bangalore, India, to, to, to Pastor Mitchell for this wonderful fellowship. Okay, amen. So, I, you know, this is the best opportunity I got it to thank him. Amen. So, for this, you know, wonderful fellowship. Uh, and I, one more thing is I'm glad this morning that I'm preaching on this International Day. It's a world evangelism. And today I wanted to tell you all. I am the fruit of the world evangelism. Amen. Standing before you. And 2004, 15 years back, in the same conference, Footscray Conference, and the same International Day, and uh, in the evening, you know, uh, I don't know who, whoever the pastor was, uh, pulling that offering for the world evangelism. And I, you know, thank Footscray Church that you gave your Money, you emptied your wallet, you emptied your bank account or whatever, the savings for this world evangelism. And today, after 15 years, you are seeing the fruit here this morning. Wow. And uh, I wanted to thank you and that, you know, it never ends. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, you have sent a couple, you know, they came to India and bought that seed, and Pastor Mitchell was speaking about that seed, taking, carrying that seed to different place to see God's move. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So they carried that seed of gospel. They carried the seed of fellowship, amen, to India. Amen. So, so out of this Footscray Church, and they have done wonderful job there. And, uh, you know, I am the first disciple of Pastor, you know, we know that Sister Rosita, and uh, in the you know Bangalore, and I and you know I have raised in their leadership, in their pastor, past, past, pastorship, amen. Then uh, you know I was the first, uh, you know, got a Jesus wedding first time, amen. So and then first launched out and pioneer work, and then after one and a half year, I took over the church from them, and from that moment, God is helping me to carry forward this wonderful vision that God has put in our heart. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So, and, uh, you know, you all know that, you know, this is my first time and that, you know, going to, amen, so that I can hear my heartbeat. <laughs> I can hear it. And it is not the normal rhythm. <laughs> amen. So the rhythm is changed. But still, what makes me bold and confident is when I see my nation's flag. And here we have the nation's flag, and in the projection you are going to see, amen. So don't mistake me this morning that, uh, you know, there is, uh, you know, nothing is there in our nation flag. Amen, Though, you know, they, they are colors, and it is not related to any witch or things that, you know, when I see that, you know, I get the, you know, boldness and, uh, you know, the fear takes away. What I see when I see my nation, what I see when I see the flags of my nation is I, I see my, the, the future vision for my nation. You know, and uh, there is nothing to do with the color. There is nothing to do with the, you know, wheels in the center. But I see the future of our nation, my nation. And, you know, we have, I just wanted to give you some inputs here. We have 4,000 cities in the nation of India. And less than 20,000, like near close to 20,000, we have, you know, um, urban areas where people, you know, uh, have urban areas, nearly one lakh, more than one lakh people live in the urban, urban areas where it has less than just little bit close to 20,000. 
And uh, you know that population we have is 1.3 million people. Not million, billion people. And we have 31 churches in India. But I tell you, we are lot to take over the nation of India for Jesus Christ. Amen. So really this fellowship has blessed me as Pastor preached, uh, Pastor Tom and preached last night. You know, I was living a religious, hypocrite life. But the moment, you know, Pastor Vinod then came to the Bangalore city, and I have been added to this wonderful discipleship. And our disciples, and as we are, you know, as a true Christians who are living for the Lord Jesus Christ, even though I saved in Assemblies of God Church, but I was a religious hypocrite, just, you know, namesake Christian I was living. But now, the moment, you know, I, you know, uh, just wanted to support Pastor you know, when he came, but I tell you, I got supported. And I've been born again in this fellowship again, and I accepted Jesus Christ, I recommitted my life, and, and, and from that moment, God is taking forth in this fellowship. Amen. So I, I, I encourage you, I want to thank you, and continue to do the work of world evangelism. Amen. We are not going to stop here, and you are seeing the fruit. And uh, you know that not not. You know, next year we are going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, celebrate 15 years anniversary of our church. Amen. So what a wonderful that you have sent that seed, and today that seed is bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. Amen. So that's powerful. That world evangelism, as Pastor mentioned, that our fellowship is evangelism. Amen. So let's believe that. Let's come before the Lord God this morning. Let's see what God has for us this morning. Amen. So if you have a Bible, open to me. Book of Nehemiah chapter 2. Amen. So Nehemiah chapter 2, we are going to read a few scriptures there. And then uh, open to me. Um, after that, we are going to read Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 29. Amen. So, you know... the. I was praying for the, the sermon and God to help me and God to give me the scripture and the illustration for this until I, uh, you know, Monday I did not got any illustration, but Monday night I got one illustration, you know, and I'm going to use it this morning. And most of you are might have aware of it because it happened in Western Australia, amen. So this last Saturday, a student pilot on his first lesson was forced to make an unplanned emergency landing after his instructor fell unconscious. I mean, one, one more time, the student pilot on his first lesson was forced to make an unplanned emergency landing after his instructor fell unconscious on the board in the mid-year. So, on, you know, the trainee, Max Sylvester, 29 years old, took off for a lesson in a Cessna light flight from the you know, Gendercourt Gen Airport in Western Australia, but quickly realized his instructor could not be able to help. And you know, radio, radioing over air traffic controller, the trainee pilot told them of the issue. He leaned, the, the, the instructor lead, leaned on uh, over the shoulder of this trainee you know, pilot, and I'm trying to keep him up, but he's keeping, keep falling down, and said that instructor, in uh, the trainee, uh, you know, pilot to, to the air controller. So do you know how to operate the airplane? Ask the operator. This is my first lesson. <laughs> the student replied. And adding this could be his first landing. The, air, the, the, the controller was able to guide the student through the flight and back towards the runway. And the air controller says to this trainee pilot that you are doing a really great job. And I know this is really stressful, but you are going to do an amazing job and you're going to help you to get, we are going to help you to get down to the ground. And the controller, you know, saying to this, you know, the, uh, the trainee pilot. According to the Sylvester, the trainee pilot, his instructor from 
the Air Australia International School remained unconscious, unresponsive, you know, leaning over in the co-pilot seat. So he was able to land the plane safely. And the owner of the flying school, Chuck McLee, you know, told reporters that never seen an incident like this in this almost 30 years of operation. What an encouraging word this is. Amen. So here it happened the way it was supposed to happen. And this good outcome is what you hope for. It just worked out this time. And here this owner of this school praising the young pilot and air traffic controller and remote instructor who did an exp you know, uh, amazing job to get everyone safety on the ground. And the main the point here is that here also he praised this trainee pilot's wife who had held it together from the ground for, for their three young children were along with, with the, they were present that time when this man was landing to the runway. Amen. Today we're going to see and God is going to minister to us this morning. And here we see in Nehemiah, you know, chapter you know, uh, 2, verse 18 to 19. Here we're going to read this portion of scripture. Amen. And I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me, and also of the king's word that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up. And build, then they set their hands to this good work. But verse 19, but when Chanbalat the Aronite and Tobiah heard of uh, the Ammonite officials, the Geshem, the Arab, heard of it, they laughed at us and despised us and said, what is, what is this thing that you, you are, you know, um, you are doing, will, you are doing, will you rebel against the king? In verse 30, so I answered them and said to them, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we his, we, his servants will rise and build. But you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Amen. So please turn to me, Matthew chapter 7. Amen. Verse uh, 24 to 29. Therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, you know, uh, and beat on that house. It, it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Verse 26, but everyone who hears this saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. And verse 27, the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and fell, and it fell, and great was its fall. Verse 29, and so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that, he, the, that the people were astonished at his teaching, and he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Amen. We see this two scripture this morning. And I wanted to tell you, that we are in the wonderful plan of God. Can you say amen? And wonderful vision of God. And Pastor Mitchell many times he said that this is not my vision. This is not my plan. But it's of God. Amen. And we are in the, uh, you know, in the building. This, you know, the great, the, the plan of God. Today I wanted to entitle my sermon is let's rise up and build. Let's rise up and build. We are a long way to go in this fellowship. We are a long way to reach out to the souls in this world. Amen. We have, you know, if you could have not sent a couple from this church, I could have not been saved. I could have not been, I, I could have lived till today, I could have lived a, you know, religious hypocrite life. But today somebody responded and somebody, you know, have taken that call of God over their life seriously and came to the nation of India, to the Bangalore city, and I'm God saved. And I, this in, the vision of God was imported in my life. And today I know that this is from God, not from any man. And I wanted to stand for this vision and I wanted to carry forth this vision in the nation of India. Today I'm not seeking any PR from any nation. My PR is heaven. My PR is heaven. 
You know, I wanted to be a, you know, uh, I, I have a PR in heaven, and I wanted to, you know, we wanted to rise up and build this, the plan of God in this world. Today we are in the business of building, you know, the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? You know, this is the time where Nehemiah responded to build the Jerusalem wall. Amen. So Jerusalem wall was like a protection to the people of Israel, people of God. And whenever they see the ruins of this Jerusalem wall, they are not doing good. And Nehemiah says here to this man, do you see how we are living, you know, despised, you know, despised and reproached in this world, in this time, in this situation, distress. You see the distress and the reproach, you know, we are living in this time. And this is not good. And we have to rise up. And, you know, he's giving, you know, you know he's giving, you know, and saying that come in verse six, seven, 16, you see, you know, furthermore, he says that come, come and let's rise up and build the, you know, the walls of Jerusalem. Today we are not building the walls of Jerusalem, but we are building the kingdom of God. Because kingdom of God is protection to people. Salvation is the, you know, the God's, uh, you know, a gift for everyone. And you know, when we have the, you know, when we have been entered into the kingdom of God, when we are received salvation, I tell you, that is where, you know, we have a life and we have a, you know, uh, the purpose in our life. We have everything, protection, everything from God when we are in the kingdom of God. Today, the protection for people is to save, get saved from sin is the kingdom of God and the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are in the process of building, you know, the kingdom of God. What a joy to be this morning, amen, that we are in the process of building. And we are, we are not, you know, focused on anything else, but we are focused on the, you know, the taking out this gospel to the different places. You know, like me, you know, there, you know, you, you, you know Footscray have invested in Africa, in Mozambique, Pastor, you know, from Africa, he's here. If we are not reached there, he could have not be here this morning. And, you know, uh, Pastor from China is here. And if we could have not send, you know, couple to China, he could have not been here in this place. You know, in New Zealand and everywhere, you know, we have sent. And I tell you, God is working and God is giving fruit out of it. Can you say amen? The problem here is, Satan wants to take us in an early stage. Today, the first I want to discuss is that the, we go through the disappointments. Disappointments can turn to discouragement in life. Disappointments. And Satan knew that if we leave these people, they are going to take this nation for Jesus Christ. You know, they're going to reach out far away and take it. You see, you know, and, you know it's a discouragement. Disappointment, discouragement will always go together. And, you know, and the dis discouragement is demonic and it is, doesn't belong to the children of God. And it's a demonic and we have to send it back where it has come from. And we are not going to live uh, our entire life in disappointment and in discouragement. And you know this, uh, you know, as I mentioned in this story, this tra pilot, training, training pilot, you know, he definitely could have been disappointed in the situation. Definitely could have seen, oh, you know, this is my first lesson and it's going to be my last lesson. <laughs> he could have prayed a sinner's prayer there, Lord, Lord, forgive all my sins, whether I don't know I'm going to make it or not. And then the, you know, the trainee pilot, imagine somebody who is sitting to train us, he's unconscious and leaning over this, you know, this man's shoulder and trying to wake up, but he's never waking up. <laughs> he says that whenever I try to lift his head, he's putting down. <laughs> he's totally unconscious. What a disappointing moment this is in his life. What a discouraging time, you know, in his life that... You know, you know, he wanted to learn, but he's stuck up there, and it is a life and death situation. We are living, we are also living in the life and death situation. 
and you know we have to learn that we should we are not going to allow this 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 disappointment and discouragement to ruin our life ruin the work of god satan knows that initially if we put the disappointment if we put the discouragement definitely we are you know satan will think that we are going to take a strong hold but it's not you know the, you know the, uh, i just wanted to bring it few scripture here that you know how many times that nehemiah has to face these people you know when verse 2 uh, chapter 2 verse 10 when you know shalab the hironite and the tobia the ammonite heard of it they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek well being of the children of israel so they are not happy it's just a man came the nehemiah came to jerusalem to see the condition of the jerusalem and these people have come to know that you know they are, they are not happy that's what bible says that they are not happy they are disturbed and again verse 19 as we read that you know these people is the 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 despised uh, the, you know nehemiah and loved and despised them and said that how, what is this that you are do you are doing you are doing and you will rebel against the king again verse 4 verse chapter 4 verse 1 and 3 it says that the same people same group of people but it so happened when you know shalab they heard that we uh, rebuilt the wall and he was furious and very upset and mocked jewish and he spoke before his brother and the army of samaria and said what are this feeble jewish doing will they forty, fortify themselves will they offer sacrifice will they complete in a day will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish stones that are burned now tobia the ammonite was beside him and said whatever they build if even a fox goes upon it he will you know it will be break down and their stones you know wall and verse 7 again in chapter 4 it happened when shanabat the tobia the harabs the ammonites and you know heard that the walls of jerusalem were being restored and the beginning of uh, the beginning to be closed and they they become very angry and all of them conspired 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 the together to come and attack jerusalem and create confusion so there is a constant attack of people to stop the work of god but we are not against the flesh and blood but we are against the demonic powers which is coming against the work of god and the the, the, the satan is constantly targeting the people those who wanted to give their life to the build the kingdom of god you know some of them we fail when we think about yes i wanted to do something to god that's it satan comes brings a disappointment to our life there are many people you know uh, you know fell you know church that you know they have discouraged they are disappointed and left uh, that you know this is not going to work in my life we decide that this is not going to work in our life but god should decide whether it's going to work or not but definitely when we are stepping into the work of god god will make sure it will work and nehemiah was a man who stood all this opposition and he says that god has put something in my heart that i am going to build the walls of jerusalem and today definitely god has put something in our hearts to respond and to build the kingdom of god what i learned in the process of my life and discipleship is you know i will not going to allow disappointments discouragement to ruin my life ruin my ministry ruin my calling which god has called me and i have grown up and god is helping me and using me in the bangalore city you know there are lots of disappointments i have gone through lots of discouragement i have gone through but i have never allowed it to ruin my life i am never allowed to ruin my family i never allowed to ruin the ministry you know and the work of god in bangalore i said you know pastor you know always used to tell me he calls me manoj my na- second name like my name is joshua manoj kumar call me mano i tell you the people have invested into this fellowship into this church and we have to carry forward for the kingdom of god always used to tell me there is a millions of dollars been invested into this church and we have to i tell you i am not here for anybody but i am here for god and god's vision this morning can you say amen and i am ready to take up this 
my, you know, the vision of God for my nation, India, which God has called me. You know, when I was preparing to come to this conference, one of the uh, disciples, dad, he never comes to church, but he recently started coming, and he started saying that, you know, pastor, I don't want you to go to Australia. I said, why? Why are you saying that? Because if you go there and people, you know, pastors, they may appoint you in Australia, and you become a pastor in Australia. <laughs> and they know that pastor, we know that's gone back, and they think that I will also be going back. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. My heart is for my nation. And I'm going to establish the work of God here, what God has begun here. I am, have a responsibility. I have, people have trusted me. The leaders have trusted me. And they have put me in this place uh, to take this, you know, this vision of God, in, of a fellowship to this nation. You know, I'm not going to live like that. Even I get uh, millions of dollars offer also, I'm not going to take it. <laughs> because I'm sold out for Jesus Christ. I'm sold out for the vision of God. Amen. My heart beats for the nation which God has called me. Amen. I decided that I'm not going to allow any disappointment and discouragement in my life. And, but I have grown up. I have seen, you know, the first, when I was a disciple, one of my, you know, the family elder, uncle, you know, everybody fears for, you know, fears to him. And even I fear to him. He said to me straight away on my face uh, that, you, you know, I've seen you taking Bible and, you know, doing, going around and, you know, uh, you know, sharing about Jesus Christ, this prayer meeting and all these things. He said to my face that if you carry Bible, you're going to come to street for begging for food. Man, I don't know. That he, man, I, I, was, I was hurt but not hated him. I was forgiven to him. I said, God, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking. You know, please forgive him. And, uh, you know, I, it, it hurts me, but I'm not, you know, hating him back for what he has spoken. But, <laughs> but I prayed for him. I prayed that God help him. And I tell you, down the line, and, uh, you know, my other brother's marriage was happening in the church. And, uh, you know, he comes here, sits in the front row, and I'm leading the song service powerfully, for, you know, filled with the Spirit of God. And, uh, you know, after that, uh, you know, the marriage ceremony, he comes to me shaking hand and saying that what you're doing is perfect. <laughs> you're doing right. You know, you're helping people. Continue to do what you're doing. <laughs> and he said this word to me, and I said that God involved in this, and when God made you to speak that word. And the second discouragement, the second disappointment I was gone through is the moment we took over the church from, uh, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Vinod and Sister Rosita, you know, after in a year, you know, we, uh, I, um, you know, my wife was diagnosed with the sickness. Amen. It was, uh, you know, she was going through, you know, day by day that her health was, health conditions was going bad day by day. And, uh, you know, we don't know what kind of sickness is it is. We go going to a normal doctor, medic, you know, the general doctor, and he gives the right the prescription, but nothing happening. So then he at last said that, okay, go to this such and such a hospital, admit here, admit her for ten days, and find out what real issues she is going through. And I tell you, and uh, you know, we, she admitted. We, I admitted him in the uh, her, her in the hospital for ten days, and all the departments of doctor coming and writing this report, that report to find out what she she is really going through. At last, after the tenth day, she admitted, and over and the doctors have made her, you know, the, the 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 conference, and they come to a conclusion that she's having some rare, you know, uh, vi uh, the, uh, the virus which is affecting her lungs. And doctor said that you have come on right time. If you have not diagnosed this and if you allowed this to carry forward, she could have lost her whole lungs. And all, I was running to the to and through and through the hospital and all this treatment and everything. But I know that this is demonic. And I, we both stood and said that we are not going to get dispo disappointed and discouraged about this sickness. And we are going to overcome because our work for God is waiting for us. 
Our work for God is more in, uh, you know, and we are being called, we are being, you know, chosen for the work of God. And we prayed and asked God's help. I tell you, after two years, again, we are going to the hospital, and doctor was amazed that the percentage of the, you know, the, 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 the lungs which is damaged, it remains the same, virus not grown. And she's here with me supporting and helping. And, you know, we, she does the cooking for 100 people in the church. Where she could not able to do any work that time, uh, even not wa walk fast, not climb st staircase and all these things uh, when she was going through. But now, you know, God has, you know, we have overcome this disappointment, overcame this, you know, discouragement uh, which came from the Satan. We have sent it back. You, you know, we are not going to entertain disappointment and discouragement in life. Satan is that doesn't belong to the Christian. It doesn't belong to the people of God. And I've grown up. Today, you know, you might have also faced that. You may have the desire to serve God, but Satan is putting that fear in your heart. Satan is putting the discouragement in your heart. Satan is putting the disappointment in your heart, saying that, no, 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 it will not work in my life. But I tell you, when we place it in God's hand, it will work in his hand. Amen. So here, you know, there is a scripture here. The people are saying, what good can come out of Nazareth? Uh, no, Nazareth? What good can come out of Nazareth? Satan may speaking to you constantly, what good can come out of your life? What good can come out of your life? You are a former drug addict. You are a former gangster. You are a former this, that. I mean, Satan may speak to our, our mind and disturb our mind and heart. I tell you, the Lord good can come out of our life when we have Jesus Christ. We are going to make difference in other, uh, our life as well as in others' life. We have been chosen. And I tell many times to the church people, you know, it is not so easy to come to Potter's house. It is not so easy. The moment we, people come, we, you know, we encourage them, we love them, we care for them. And, uh, you know, when the, we talk about discipleship, they're not ready to submit. They're not ready, ready to submit. As pastors say, they go and take two steps back, three steps back, or sometimes they will vanish. But what, who we are here, I have chosen one for the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? We are called and we are into this discipleship. We are submitted under the leadership and we are going to, you know, take forward this, plan, you know, the vision of God for the kingdom of God. I mean, what is scripture this is? You know, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Amen. So write down this, the, write down the vision, make it plain on the tablet so that the readers may run with it. We are all running for the vision of God. Amen. We are running from true and fro this morning. Amen. So that finally I wanted to tell you, don't allow this dis disappointment and discouragement in our life. Uh, let us overcome as Nehemiah overcame. Every time there was, Nehemiah says that we are going to continue to do the work of God. We are not going to stop any work for, you know, and further, and we are going to take this work and we are going to complete this. Nehemiah is, was ready to reply back to these people. You know, in our text, if you see, you know, when people say that, how can you do this? Will you come against the king? So Nehemiah is replying that, so I answered them and said to them, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, we his servants will arise and build, but you have no heritage or, or right or memorial in this Jerusalem. Every time if you see that Nehemiah replies back, God is with us. God will prosper us. At last I close. I want to tell you that, you know, what encouragement can do. Encouragement and challenge go together. Can you say amen? Here Nehemiah is encouraging these people. Nehemiah said, come, arise and build. Let's build it. Amen. He's encouraging people with a challenge. Today, conference is all about encouragement and challenge. Can you say amen? What a, so far, what a conference this is. From the day when it is begin, 
And what if for the first preaching Monday night, the common people, we are built by, the kingdom of God is built by the common people. I am the least of that common. I mean, I'm not worthy to stand here. I'm not worthy to do, you know, but God is worthy and he makes people worthy. And encouragement, you see in the, our, uh, in our illustration, this operator, this operator from nowhere, from the middle of this kiosk, the middle of this stress, you, you operator is saying, you're doing a really great job. And I know this is really stressful, but you are going to do an amazing job and you are going to help you get, it, you, you get down to the ground and the operator said. I tell you, any, any situation can be turned out by encouraging the people. Can you say amen? And challenging the people. And I have learned, you know, that I am standing here because, you know, the challenge I receive, the encouragement I receive from my leader, Pastor Darrell Elliott, and my pastor, you know, we know that, and all the pastors here, because of your encouragement, I'm standing before you. And let's encourage people. And I, you, you, we are not, we don't know how that encouragement can work wonders in people's life. Today I have 80% in my church is all single men and women. They have been encouraged and they said, I'm going to get married soon. I'm going to go preach the gospel. I mean, this is what the encouragement and challenge can bring it. Our fellowship's all about, you know, not discouragement and disappointment, but encouragement and challenge. Amen. I have been challenged in, my, in our fellowship for what God is doing and with this, well, you know, with the vision. Here we see that in, you know, Hebrews chapter 3.13, but exhort one, ex, exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. One more scripture, it's in Hebrews 10, 24, 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up the love and, and good works not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together, no, as it is in the manner of some, but exhort, that means encourage one another so much that more as you see the day approaching. I mean, coming of the Lord is very near. I mean, we have to start, there is no, you know, there is no time for holidays. Can you say amen? There is no time for holidays or break. Pastor, I want a break from what I'm doing. But I tell you, day is approaching, and we have to be always on our, our, our toe and going to and fro and doing the work of God, busy for the kingdom of God, because the time is running out. The coming of the Lord is very near. Let's, pastor and disciple and everyone here, whoever we see, whoever God has given into our life, let's encourage them and challenge them. Brother and sister, you can do it for the kingdom of God. You are not going to do, but God is going to do in your life. We are going to involve God in our life. The moment we involve God in our life, everything changes. Amen? So let's be an encouraging to the people, who are, whoever God is bringing to our life, to our church, and let them, you know, challenge them. And really, we can take it, the vision, wherever it has to reach, and it definitely, and 4,000 church, 4,000 cities, I tell you, you know, uh, we can do it. When we surrender our life to God. When we continue to do the world evangelism. That's all I have. Amen. So.